Hi, this is Mary with Insect Shield, and I am back today with Dr. Tom Mather, our tick expert. Welcome, Tom. Thank you for having me. Okay, Tom, we basically call it an emergency session of our um, Equip for Ticks um, and discussions with you. Um, we have some, a myth that you busted, but we need further busting on. So basically, last year, um, with your assistance, we put out a video about five top myths about ticks. Um, it's had over 500,000 views. A lot of people getting a lot of great information. So we're super excited about that, that we're really getting, you know, debunking myths and getting people to know about ticks and how to protect themselves and what to look for. But one of the myths that you debunked, people do not believe it to be debunked. Um, and this is the myth of that ticks fall from trees. Um, people believe that ticks do fall from trees and they believe you are wrong that they do not. So I'm just going to read a couple of the comments we got, and then I'd like you to give us um, your opinion and further knowledge as a tick expert and probably, and one of the top leading experts, not probably one of the leading experts of ticks in the U.S. and probably in the world. Do you agree with that, Tom? That's awfully well, kind you of are. you. I don't we, know everyone I know is like that, oh, but... Dr. Mather, he knows everything about ticks. Okay, so here was one. I have personally seen ticks fall from trees like drops of rain. Um, it was a sunny day, but it sounded like raindrops hitting the dry leaves. We would stop walking, and soon the drops would also stop, and then take a few more steps, and the raindrop sound would start again. The sky was blue, and we were very confused. Then I felt a drop on my hit my head, and simultaneously noticed my friend's shirts covered in ticks. We brushed them off and sprinted out, but I had five ticks already embedded by the time I got back to the room. They were definitely deer ticks and falling on us from above head level. Another one. I have found ticks on my roof while painting eaves and trims. They are definitely in trees. I have walked under oak trees and had a tick land on my arm. Excuse me. Squirrels get ticks and fleas. They do sometimes fall from above. They may not live there, but they do fall from trees. I had two ticks drop down literally on me from the tree I was sitting under. Ticks do fall from trees onto their prospective hosts. I witnessed it twice this weekend. And then the last one of many. Um, ticks can fall out of trees. Yes, they don't climb up the trees, but they get up by being on an animal like a squirrel or raccoon. So Tom, hearing those comments, and if you could impart some wisdom, give us some more information what would you say? Because these people believe well, ticks have fallen from trees and gotten on Yeah, We hear this all of the time, and really the proof is in the pudding. So I would challenge all of those people the next time that they had a tick that they were confident fell out of them on the tree, take a picture of okay. it. And I think that's the best thing because we've actually asked people to do that. Um, there was one gentleman in, in Oregon who sat under the same tree every day when he had his cigarette break, and he said, they always are falling out of the trees on my head. And I don't know, for one, I'm not sure why he kept going back to the same spot if he... <laughs> <laughs> but what he finally did was send us a picture to our tick spotters program. And as certain as I was that it wouldn't be a tick, I was right, it was an aphid. So aphids fall out of trees. Aphids have six legs, but they look a lot like a tick, although ticks would have eight legs if they were dropping out of trees trying to get on you. And um, so it was an easy thing to sort of debunk at that point. I, I actually don't know one tick biologist across America that believes that ticks fall out of trees. And it's just sort of a, a, a biological thing, really. So ticks need humidity in order to, to survive long periods of time when they're not on a host. When they're on a host, they're sucking on blood, right? And so when if they were on a bird, like a whole flock of birds flying overhead, and some tick decided that's when it was filled with blood and it was going to drop off because they don't drop off when they're not filled with blood. When Once they're attached, they stay attached. Anyway, so let's imagine this tick fell off of a bird. It would have been an engorged tick, so it wouldn't really be looking for another blood meal. So, you know, the likelihood of 
a, a tick getting on you from, let's say, birds overhead is very unlikely because any tick that would fall off of a bird would be a blood-fed tick and it wouldn't be looking for another blood meal for, for months. Similarly, um, from squirrels and raccoons that might be in trees, you know, yes, ticks will be on those animals and they'll take a, a blood meal and then they'll drop off of those animals, but the environment up in a treetop isn't conducive for long-term survival of these ticks. So they would drop off full of blood. They, they're not ready to eat again for, for months, right? And so they have to go through a transformation process, growing into the next stage. And they would be doing that in a habitat that isn't um, humid enough for them to survive. So just like if a, if a nymphal stage tick drops off of your cat in your house, it's not going to be able to survive until it becomes an adult to get back on you again when it's looking for a next blood meal because it's just not humid enough um, for the tick to survive. So the, 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 you know, the biological um, properties that allow ticks to, to live are really sort of the, the, the thing that keeps, keeps me at least understanding that this is just a myth and there's probably other explanations for all these little bugs falling onto people. And when we look at that, I mean, there are certain what we call tick lookalikes. They, people think they look like ticks. In fact, 5% or so of the things that people send to us through tick spotters are not ticks. They're things that people think are ticks, but they're not really ticks. And um, weevils are um, the number one thing. And the weevils live so, in trees? There are oak weevils. There, there are many species of weevils, and you know some of them feed on acorns. Um, they have six legs, but they have like a little snout. And you know, it's, in fact, if if a lot of them are so snouted that you know, if that was a tick, that would be a honk a honking bite that you would get from that snout. But they don't bite. Weevils don't bite. They're not ticks. Aphids really don't bite. I mean, they might try to latch onto your skin or something like that to hold on because, you know, you're big and they're little, but um, yeah, they're not going to, they're not going to bite. Aphids feed on plants, weevils feed on leaves and, and seeds and things like that. Um, those are the two most common things that are tick lookalikes that actually do fall out of trees. So, in, so we would, in most of these cases, it's most likely a look-alike situation because, I mean, and I've been with you and, you know, and we've been looking at ticks together and ticks, even like the adult ticks are tiny. So even for a layman to look at it and go, well, that looks like that's a tick um, without even maybe having like a magnifying glass. Like, you know, I don't know if you would put those three things next to me and I've studied to like, they'd have to be pretty big for me probably even to tell the difference at this tiny little you know, as you say, like kind of poppy seed or size or sesame seed, would I, with my naked eye, actually even be able to tell a difference because I'm not an expert in looking at ticks all day yeah. like you? Probably not. You would, you would be hard pressed. I mean, the easiest thing is if you could sort of focus. A lot of times people just see little specks and they assume they're ticks because they're afraid of mm -hmm. them. They also, what I've learned is one of the reasons that perpetuates this is that people don't want to um, believe when they find a tick in their head that the tick had actually crawled across their entire body because <laughs> yeah. that just, they just don't want to believe no. that. So it must have fallen yes. out of a tree onto their head to get to their head. Um, but really in, in reality, we can, we can, you know, if you're patient, you can put a tick on your ankle and in about five minutes, it will have crawled up to your head. That's just what ticks do. They like to crawl up. Um, kind of a gross thing to think about. I don't think we'd get very many people volunteering for that experiment. But, um, and certain ticks, American dog ticks in particular, are very robust. And it seems like while they may get caught up in a hairline or something, they almost always get to the very top of your head. So they're like, you know, it's like Mount Everest for them, I think. They, they're, they're the overachievers that get to the top of the head. And why, why did ticks do that? And so that's, a, that's probably a story for another day, but you know, there's just thinner skin and more vascularization in the head, head region of animals and people. 
And so it's easier to steal blood. And it's usually ticks have sort of adapted to ending up in places where they're not going to be found or groomed off by the host and where the skin is thinner and they're going to be able to steal blood more easily. Thank you so much, Dr. Mather, for helping us hopefully debunk this myth. And I mean, I think putting a call out there to people saying, hey, if you see this happen, snap a picture, set, go to your website, and that's the Tick Encounter. Tick Encounter website, find Tick Spotters. You could actually just Google Tick, tick Spotters. Okay. It'll come up. Send a picture. There's a submission form. Okay. Attach the picture, fill out the form, and tell us, you know, show us what you're seeing. I mean, we're happy to, we're happy to learn and we're happy to look, but, um, you know, the, the people that gave you those um, testimon testimonials earlier, um, those are just five or six of the hundreds that we've heard, and we've been able to debunk them um, for the most part when people have, you know, provided the evidence that they have. Um, but yet, I think people just just want to believe differently, but biology is sort of against the whole thing, and um, just uh, the pra practicality of it all. I mean, just think of a, of a tick. That wouldn't be a very good um, host-finding strategy to be f using falling out of the sky because, you know, it's not like they are trained parachutists that they can zero in on a host or anything, right? So think of all of the misses that they would have. Um, and um, yeah, the ticks are in it to win it. And winning it for a tick is finding a host and taking a blood meal so it can grow to the next stage or lay eggs. And so, um, yeah, that it wouldn't be a very smart natural selection process to utilize falling out of the sky as a strategy for for finding a host. Okay, well, thank you so much. And hopefully we've helped debunk this myth and also given people, if they, you know, still believe it, we've given them a way to, to help prove it because we're talking science here. And if we can have evidence, um, then that we can back it up with that. So excellent. And we yeah, will um, put some links actually on the bottom of this to your Tick lookalike page also. I think then people can maybe take a look at that and then see that, okay, maybe that wasn't a tick. That's all out of the sky yeah. into my head. So, yeah, we could, you know, talk about tick lookalikes since it's a fairly common phenomenon. The, the very most common one actually is interesting um, is one called a spider beetle. And spider beetles are um, household pests. They're kind of humpy looking. Some of them are black and red. So people think that they're a a black-legged tick because black-legged ticks are black and red. But if you count their legs, they have six legs and they have long antennae out the front. So ticks don't have antennae mm -hmm. and ticks that size would have eight legs. They almost always are found when people um, send them to us, they say, oh, I found this in my bathroom. So they tend to like bathrooms and they also get in linen closets, which sometimes I suppose are in bathrooms. And so people find them on their bed and um, that's probably the most common um, tick lookalike that we get. So, you know, and peop I, I, I understand people think they're ticks because they're little and they are the right color and they can't really see them like you, like you were saying, they can't really see them carefully, um, carefully enough. But when we, when they have a picture, um, that's what they turn out to be. Excellent. Well, I think that's the thing. This is some more good knowledge, and maybe in our original MythBusters, we didn't go into quite enough kind of the idea of the lookalike and let people maybe be a little bit more observant, not just because something, you know, a small black little insecty thing fell on me that it's a tick. There's many that look like it. So hopefully we yeah, we've so debunked. we can make them into tick experts okay. by training them what just what makes a tick a tick and what makes a bug not a tick. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom, for joining me today. And hopefully yeah. we've, uh, we've debunked the myth that ticks fall from trees because they do not according to all of the leading tick experts, including yourself. So thank you. Thanks again.